Welcome to the Reality Revolution Podcast. I am your host, Brian Scott, author, life coach, entrepreneur, speaker, inner space astronaut, epiphany addict, positive mind metaphysician, and artist. This podcast is dedicated to the spirits who believe life is meant to be magical and fun. It contains advanced viewpoints for the multidimensional human beings of the 21st century. Here, we venture to share the mysteries of self and reality. Our primary purpose is to reawaken your sense of fascination and awe towards life and to shatter your rigid belief systems and ways of seeing the world. Our goal is to hack reality, unleash your potential, and open unlimited possibilities of wealth, health, and relationships in your life. Today's episode is about the reality revolution itself. Now, if you go back to the first episode, I briefly talked about my belief that we are experiencing a reality revolution in the world. And I'd like to go into further detail about this. We're experiencing a quantum shift in the world, a new reality revolution. You can see it all around you. We are becoming more and more aware of the ways we create our own reality. Look at the explosion of Facebook groups and books upon this very topic. We're exploring everything from experiential quantum physics, meditation, hypnosis, Qigong, reality transurfing, sensory deprivation tanks, virtual reality, mind tech, ayahuasca, psychedelics, channeling, quantum jumping, reality shifting, manifestation, mindfulness, neuro-linguistic programming, epigenetics, EFT, energy psychology, yoga, ho'oponopono, luck coaching, silva mind control, cybernetics, intuition training, biohacking, heart coherence, the Wim Hof method, brainwave manipulation, virtual reality, and we're being given endless experiments and exercises recommended by gurus and magicians to expand our consciousness and change our reality. There is a movement now in literature, seminars, educators, scientists, and experts are helping lift humanity's knowledge of the human mind and its ability to create reality. We're experiencing exponential transformations in neuroscience and physics, which are fundamentally changing the way we see the world. I see this personally in recent seminars that I visited. Recently, I went to Abraham. If anybody's ever gone to Abraham, I cannot tell you enough how wonderful it is. If you do not know who Abraham is, Jerry and Esther Hicks, it was created uh, back in the 90s, and essentially Esther Hicks says that she communicates with a group of entities called Abraham. And in these seminars, people get up and ask Abraham questions. When I tell my friends that I go to this, sometimes I get made fun of and I hear jokes about the movie Ghost. But when you go to one of these seminars, it's not just Abraham, it's the people there. You can see a movement of people becoming aware of the power of their minds and getting in touch with the ability that we have to create reality. The very energy in the room is palpable and incredible. Just go to one of Dr. Joe Dispenda's events and you will see an incredible movement where people are claiming to have solved major health problems, brain cancers within seven days, huge life-changing transformations are occurring at these seminars. Recently, I just got back from Funnel Hacking Live, an internet marketing conference, but out of the 4,500 people there, almost everybody was there to raise a movement and raise groups of people to change their realities. And it was fundamental to my view that we are experiencing a reality revolution. I mean, just look at it. We're seeing exploding interest in meditation. Yoga is going mainstream. Sensory deprivation tanks are exploding. We see them all around like Starbucks. People are exploring parallel realities and movements like reality transurfing are growing in popularity. I first heard the term reality revolution in Irvin Laszlo's book, The Quantum Shift and the Global Brain where he stated the global brain is a quasi-neural energy and information processing network created by six and a half billion humans on the planet 
interacting in many ways, private as well as public, and on many levels, local as well as global. A quantum shift in the global brain is sudden and fundamental transformation in the relations of a significant segment of the six and a half billion humans to each other and to nature. He calls it a macro shift in our society. And likewise, a sudden fundamental transformation in cutting edge perceptions regarding the nature of reality, a paradigm shift in science. The two shifts together make for a veritable reality revolution in society as well as in science. And that is our goal on this podcast, to discuss this mind-blowing movement. You know, Heisenberg, a famous physicist from long ago, stated, it must be admitted that during the last hundred years, there have been such radical changes of thought pattern in the history of at least our own science, physics, that it's perfectly legitimate to speak of one or even several revolutions. And we are experiencing one of these revolutions. The transition from one age to the next can be triggered by a seemingly minute change in a single idea, is what Heisenberg would say. Oftentimes, it is the abandonment of commonly held and cherished truths that have propelled science forward, and that is what we're discussing today. Forget about the, the cat videos you're watching on Facebook and the ridiculous political arguments and wake up and look at what's happening. We're experiencing exponential discoveries in technology and neuroscience that are expanding our abilities. Just through technology alone, you know that we are experiencing a transformation in the way that we see and communicate with the world. And this is interacting with the way that we, our brains interact with the world. You know, Laszlo goes on to say that our reality is shifting because the human world has become unstable also and is no longer sustainable. But the reality revolution harbors a unique opportunity. This decade is the first in history that offers the choice between being a fading obsolete world and the first of a new and viable one. We've heard these things before, but these breakthroughs in understanding quantum physics and these new understandings in neuroscience pulled together are offering us an absolutely profound change in the way we can see the world. As Paul Levy says in uh, Quantum Revelation, a wonderful book, the new reality that we're experiencing is an intrinsically surprising reality. Nothing continues in the same way as it did before. Everything bifurcates and changes. This expression coming originally from mathematics and chaos theory indicates that the path of development of a system encounters a rapid, previously unforeseen change. We live in an age of bifurcation in the midst of a fundamental transformation in our world, as Levy calls it, a macro shift. And our understanding of the world we live in determines the ethics we live by. Living a life based on a worldview that is an illusion can easily lead to living the wrong life. So I am calling for us to revision our idea of the world we live in. We can change our perception of the possibilities available in our world, thus opening up previously unimagined pathways of creation and effective action. You know, I meet a lot of people that see the world and they feel hopelessness, that the government is out of control and that they don't have the ability to, to maximize the, the reality that we live in. And that's not true. As we come into touch with these powers, these powers are free. And by using them, you can literally transform and change the world that you're living in. Cultural philosopher Jean Gebser has described how human consciousness, rather than being static, has gone through a number of mutations in our history. Gebser believed that at the current time, we are undergoing another such mutation. One of those flag bearers is quantum physics. In quantum physics, consciousness has entered the field of physics. The realization which takes place within consciousness itself. The very realization transforms and literally mutates the very consciousness that realizes this. When human consciousness passes through a mutation, the effects are comparable, entering into another form of reality. As Gebser says, as if humanity is becoming a new species and you are becoming a new species, we are coming into a realization 
of the power of our minds to shape the world. You know, I got an email the other day in relation to one of my first podcasts, and you can email me anytime at brian at advancedsuccessinstitute.com or at chiefexecutiveprime at gmail.com. And it said, I, I just don't see evidence that our thoughts really have that powerful an effect. It's only through action. And our fates are not really determined by just our minds. And so this idea has been disproven that the law of attraction is just some hokey thing or that the idea that we can maneuver through realities with only our minds. Please understand, it has been proven that as Lynn McTaggart says, our thoughts can change reality. Joseph Selby in The Physics of God states, our deeply held thoughts are powerful. We see this power in the placebo effect. It is even more dramatically demonstrated in the nearly instantaneous physiological changes of MPD sufferers. Every moment of every day, the holographic projection we experience as our physical bodies manifests exactly what our deeply held thoughts dictate, according to Selby. The moment we change such deeply held thoughts is the moment our physical body changes. We are even more amazing. We make the world. Selby also states, without intelligent observers, us, the cosmic movie, the light show illusion of matter will not play. The intelligent observer effect has been painstakingly and exactly measured and confirmed in thousands of double slit experiments. One might be tempted to dismiss the double slit experiment as parlor tricks that affect only a few minuscule photons or atoms, but the implications of the intelligent observer effect is profound. Without intelligent observers, there can be no world. As physicist Andre Lind stated, the universe and the observer exist as a pair. And famous prize-winning physicist John Archibald Wheeler stated it very simply that this is a participatory universe. Amit Goswami also stated there is no object in space-time without conscious subject looking at it. These are incredible implications. Our thoughts can change the world. In my idea, we are seeing the power of our minds to manifest reality becoming more and more powerful. We're beginning to manifest our reality faster and more powerful than ever before. What took years before may take seconds now. And part of that is just a simple interaction between different sciences and our social media and technology is combining our ability to manifest these powers. It gives us more avenues for our thoughts to come into fruition. You know, when I went to see Abraham, she stated one of the things was that we are at the leading edge right now and thoughts are beginning to manifest in less than 17 seconds and that is speeding up and we're seeing it all around. We see it in the placebo effect. According to Psychology Today, they stated for pharmaceutical companies, the growing power of antidepressant placebos is vexing problem, resulting in a substantially reduced investment in this area. The growing potency of placebo effect is not limited to psychiatric drugs. When researchers started looking closely at pain drug clinical trials, they found that an average of 27% of patients in 1996 reported pain reduction from new pain medications being developed relative to the placebo pills. Now, what's happening by 2013, that difference had shrunk to just 9% in the last decade. More than 90% of painkillers developed have failed to show a significant improvement over placebos in the final stages of clinical trials. And that was in 2013. Imagine what's happening now. We see corporations and governments and media outlets and political parties telling us one reality and then there's another. Constantly striving to tell us about these new changes. But then we have an entire group of media that is trying to tell us that we do not have control. So I want to continue to talk about this idea so that you can believe in your power. William Tiller, physicist at Stanford University, had the idea to test when thoughts were energy and if it would not be possible to imprison that thought energy into an electronic memory to later release into effect the physical world. So the idea that a thought is an actual physical thing that can be measured. 
Now, um, William Tiller has written like over 250 scientific papers on how remote influence worked and has been fascinated by the idea to charge a machine with human intention. Since he could not test this idea on another human, he used the next best thing to a human. He used a fruit fly. This is commonly used in scientific experiments. And they programmed the little black box with highly specific intentions. So they sat and meditated for 15 minutes with the intention of just raising the ATP production in the fruit fly larvae. That's all they did. They meditated intensely for 15 minutes on a box to raise the ATP production in fruit fly larvae. You don't need to know what ATP is, just know it's a specific level that can be measured. Now he set up a second laboratory in Minnesota and shipped the imprinted box and another empty box that was never meditated on, 1,500 miles away. The other scientists put the box inside the larvae cages, just put it in the general area without knowing which was the imprinted one and which one was blank. And they discovered the intention indeed raised the ATP level and that it also affected the genealogical line of the fruit flies. And they repeated the experiment often and found that the effect got stronger every time. The longer the imprinted box was in the room, the stronger the effect. It was as if the intention removed the box. The effect continued. The intention appeared to also change the environment. This quantum effect changed the reality of the room. The oscillations he measured had the Einstein-Bose condensate, the highest state of coherence. The idea of charged places can actually be experienced. I'm sure we've all had them. We've been to special places that are sacred. You know, I felt like this feeling when I went to the Grand Canyon, that it was a charged place based on the intentions of the people around. Maybe the simple awe and wonder of the people that had visited had saturated that environment. And when I was there, I was infected with it. I'm sure we all have stories similar to that. Research has also shown that negative thoughts and visualizations can have a negative effect on your body. So it goes both ways. By thinking negative thoughts, you damage the health of your own cells. It's as if the negativity is somehow infectious and takes on a physical form that is also known as the nocebo effect, the result of a negative thought. Now, if you've been told by a doctor you'll die in six months and your mind believes it, you most likely will die in six months. So I'm asking the doctors out there, if for some reason you believe that I'm going to die in six months, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> the importance here is if your mind believes this. Now, the belief we've talked about in other episodes, a belief emerges from collective affirmations within your mind. It's what you're thinking most of the time is what you end up believing. Now, studies have shown that people with negative thought patterns heal much slower from an injury than positive thinking people. Scientific evidence has suggested that human thoughts regularly manipulate the chemical nature of our bodies. Recently, doctors have been able to prove that all of the biological reasons behind the spread of sickness and disease, 75% of them originate in the mind. Which means that out of the 100 sick people, 75 of them have fallen sick due to a negative thought process. For example, Depression is a direct result of alternatives in DNA cells caused by the constant flow of negative thoughts. Consequently, high levels of depression result in mental conditions such as Alzheimer's disease and asthma. Therefore, stress-related disorders are initiated by events in the brain. So the next time you go into a hospital and you look at the 100 people that are sitting there in the emergency room or wherever you're at, just realize that 75 of those people are there because of thoughts in their mind. So in many ways, this proves that old adage of positive thinking being highly important to your health and well-being. Your thoughts are energy that is being transmitted by the mind. Like a TV antenna, you send and receive information this way. Scientists have found that the normal electrostatical energy being emitted by your heart shows around 10 to 15 millivolts on the EEG. But when you meditate, it goes to 3 volts in an experiment at Stanford University, it has been proven that directed thoughts produce a physical energy even over a remote distance. The actual electrical frequency that was measured during healing intentions went up to 190 volts. That's a lot. There are studies on healing intentions as well as Qigong masters sending out Qi that measured electric frequencies between 2 and 30 hertz. The power 
of this energy can affect the molecular structure of matter. It has been scientifically proven that your thoughts are not only electrostatical, but also magnetic. There have been studies of experienced meditators sending focused thoughts on water with the intention to affect its molecular structure and they examined that it indeed changed the molecular structure and wavelength of water qualities. The power of thoughts on water has been studied by Mr. Emoto. I recommend that you read his book. It is fantastic. It discusses how people would sit in a room and think certain thoughts and then they could examine the way that the water would create different vibrations and different designs purely from the thoughts. And there's an artist named Lisa Park. I recommend you go to her website. And she literally creates pieces of art by using her mind and creating vibrations on water. Clearly, with all of these studies and what is happening and the transformation that's occurring, we are on the brink. We are on the precipice. Which direction will we go? Will we fall to the tempting power of fear? Turn on your news. Watch the campaigns that are going on right now. And when people invoke fear, if you know anything about the power of thoughts to change the world, Neville Goddard used to say, the feeling is the secret. So it's easier to create and change your reality when your thoughts are tied to powerful emotions. And so what I see happening is I see politicians and the media and corporations using the power of fear, which is a very easy emotion to invoke. It's what we are. We evolved with an amygdala in our brain, which is used to help us survive. When we feel fear, it's a software that literally help us to survive. And so as a result, it's easier for us to feel fear. And people know that and they invoke fear to manipulate you. But the, the, the side result of this is that we are creating fearful realities around us. You may be scared of that person entering into our country or that person committing a crime. And then those things start happening. They start happening because we are creating these realities. A Chinese proverb warns, if we do not change direction, we are likely to end up exactly where we're headed. Now applied to today's world, this would be disastrous. This is a deepening insecurity in our countries all over the world, both rich and poor and greater propensity in many parts of the world to resort to terrorism and war and violence. These wars and violence spread together declared and undeclared tax on the countries, harboring terrorists and fear of immigrants, anger, hate. This is leading to breakdowns, but there is another path that we can take. As we come into a realization of the power of our minds to change the world, we can choose another emotion. We can choose love, curiosity, creativity, and wonder. You can choose these emotions. You can choose to spread these emotions to the people around you. And by doing so, you can create a reality that is better than the one that we can choose from. Our greatest threat comes from fear and a lack of understanding of our exponentially rising power. Understand our interpretive framework governs our perception of reality. If you're a cynic, then life becomes banal and cynical. Every day becomes a drag. It becomes hard to even wake up. Open yourself to a more optimistic view of the world. It may seem hopeless. You may see the climate change is coming. That You may hear reports that the world's going to end in 12 years. Or you can embrace the idea that we can physically change it. We can also mentally change it with our minds. The optimist sees bliss and opportunity everywhere. Open yourself up to this perspective. By moving into this positive perspective, you can become a sorcerer, a wizard, an alchemist. Find authorship over your subjectivity. We know the world we're looking at is not necessarily what's really happening. The brain is filtering the environment it has and creating a 3D model of what is around us when actually reality may be two-dimensional. It's subjective. The reality that you have 
may be different than mine, but it is purely subjective. So you have a choice. You can claim that fate will take you away, or you can find authorship over your subjectivity. For in this, you will find the ultimate antidote to despair and sadness. I talk to people every day, people that are despondent, that have lost hope, that feel despair. It's a simple choice. I know it's more complicated than that, but listen, this can be your antidote. Choose to find authorship over your subjectivity. Everything is a miracle. When reality is coupled to perception, tweak the knobs and levers and buttons of perception to let go of that distant voice of despair. Forget about that voice of fear. Let's embrace the research. For There's great research that I recommend by Jamie Wheel and Stephen Kotler, and they have something called the Flow Genome Project, which is stated intention is to deconstruct and unveil ecstatic states of being and understand what happens when people go into flow. Let's find a way to unleash this technology. With this new technology, Jimmy Wheel and Stephen Kotler have found that biology, neurology, the pharmacology of ecstatic states, states where we go outside of ourselves, beyond ourselves, they're finding that we reach these states not by accident, that we can become ontological wizards of our reality, using the knobs and levers of perception to demystify our own experience. And my heart loves this idea. You understand the idea of exponentiality. If I go and take 30 steps, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to 30, it's 30. But if you make it exponential, one step, two steps, four steps, eight steps, if I take those same 30 steps, you'll be at a billion. We know from Moore's law and looking at the world that we are experiencing an incredible transformation right now in technology. Technology is expanding exponentially in the same manner I just described. What I am stating and declaring right now is that our consciousness is expanding exponentially and you can be left behind and wallow in your fear or embrace the idea that maybe there is something greater. We can enter into states of flow. We'll be talking about this in future episodes because it is truly fascinating. We must transcend and move to a greater awareness. We must acknowledge this transformation. We must come to an understanding. We can engineer our own nirvana through this exponential awareness of consciousness, neuroscience, physics, and technology. We have a moral imperative for our society to use these biotechnologies and nanotechnologies and neuroscience and physics to create bliss for ourselves beyond our experience. Another book by Kevin Kelly I'm reminded of about the origin of language and he states that once we started to create networks and webs of meaning through the origin of language, we had a singularity. And we moved beyond just reproducing. We started creating meaning to the world around us. Imagine the first time that we learned to talk and the first time that we learned to take this language and put it on paper and we started creating literature. Those were singularities. And we are going into another singularity. We must transcend and move to a greater awareness. We must acknowledge this transformation. Ray Kurzweil's wonderful book, The Human Singularity is Near, discusses this singularity and it's happening soon. Ray Kurzweil is an engineer at Google now. He is where I first heard the idea of exponentiality. Technology is expanding exponential. And he's discussing the singularity. And I am adding to this conversation and making the argument that human consciousness is expanding in the same way and is a part of this singularity. You know, we carry a supercomputer in our pockets now. Maybe you're listening to this podcast from the supercomputer in your pocket. And these supercomputers used to be the size of skyscrapers and buildings. And imagine that we have these in our pockets now. And imagine when we come into grip with the power of our brain to create and manifest new experiences when it reaches the same level of exponentiality. Embrace exponential change in technology and embrace exponential change in consciousness. 
The world of flesh and mind is becoming information technology. We're becoming more aware of the way our brain interacts with our bodies. Biotechnology is mastering the information processes of biology. We are made of code and we are beginning to understand how to internally program and harness our creative capacity to change our biology and the material around us. We can choose to wallow in what we are afraid of. It would be easy for me to do that if you listen to the story of my first podcast where I discussed the home invasion I had. I could just sit and wallow in fear of somebody coming into my house and killing me for some reason. Or I could walk around fearfully of people around me. But how can you do that? The universe can become our canvas for our minds. Our lives can become a piece of art. And I say that we create and embrace this. There's these pendulums of fear and war and anger and hate. Let's create a pendulum of love and peace. We can do that together. Large group meditations can lower the crime rate. According to a recent series of studies spanning decades suggesting a sufficiently large group practicing advanced transcendental meditation is associated with decreased social violence. In the study for the period of 2007 to 2010, when there was a sufficiently large group, statistical analysis found a significant decrease in both the national homicide rate and urban violent crime rate compared to trends during the baseline period. The total drop in the homicide rate relative to the baseline average was 21.2% over the four-year intervention period. Analysis of monthly data showed the rising trend of U.S. homicides during this baseline was reversed during the intervention period of 2007 to 2010. Researchers estimate that 8,157 homicides were averted by the highly significant shift from an increasing to a decreasing trend in homicide rates. So a group of meditators may have saved 8,000 people out there. The drop in the violent crime rate was 18.5%. That is incredible. And that's based on 206 urban areas sampled, populations over 100,000. It could be even more than that. We can do this. We can change this. We can become the tipping point of a new reality revolution that transforms the world. I want you to help me do that. We're going to discuss this on future podcasts. We're going to discuss the ways that we can change reality. And there's nothing that we cannot talk about. We're open to all ideas. Everything is interesting. Everything is new. Let's test out these ideas. Let's discuss their, their viability. Send me information you can email me again at brian at advancedsuccessinstitute.com or you can also email me at chiefexecutiveprime at gmail.com. Discuss your ideas. If you have ways that you see the reality revolution occurring, become a reporter for it. I will read what you send me. I want this to be a tipping point. Let's use this podcast for the power to create a pendulum of peace and love. I am so grateful that you spent this time with me. I hope you get this message out. I'm sure it already is. I'm sure you're already aware of it. I am so thankful that you've spent this time. And I'll be creating more podcasts here in the future. We're going to discuss all of these ideas. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining the Reality Revolution.